created a nice office for uh, the last couple of days uh, here at a friend's place in West Palm Beach. Uh, headed to Amsterdam tonight uh, to go back to Europe and live there for the next uh, three to four months and head to Slovenia on Thursday or Friday. So, um, you know what, I decided um, last year that I was tired of being stuck in one place and not happy and uh, with the way certain things were going in my life and made some changes and so I, you know, I left the country and now I'm back and now I'm going again and you know, the reality is, I mean, I know some people say if you have children or whatnot, you can't, you know, change your life, but what I've learned through the, all these stretching is that you can create whatever you want. You're either source over your life or as the creator and the author of the experiences, or you're at the effect of the world. Those are the only, that's the only dichotomy of responsibility that exists, is that you're either source over creation. You know, you are the decider and the illuminator and the creator of creation, of your life. Or you're at the effect of whatever happens to you. Are you sick of government lackeys who say you didn't build that? Are you tired of elitists who think you need a government permission slip for everything? Everything you do is an A to B conversation and the government should see their way out of it. Create true free markets by adopting the BIPCOT No Government License. The BIPCOT NoGov license allows use or modification of any product, service, or software except by governments or government agents. Go to BIPCOT.org. That's Bravo, India, Papa, Charlie, Oscar, Tango.org. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Peaceful Anarchism on the Voluntary Virtues Network on thesteesofliberty.com and theconsciousresistance.com. So the uh, Peaceful Anarchism show is covered by the BIPCOT No Gov License. This allows for reuse for anyone except for governments and the agents thereof. You can find out more information on BIPCOT.org. <laughs> so today we have a special guest, uh, Adam Williams, who is coming to us from Holland, right? It's correct. Uh, Rotterdam. Yeah, he's a uh, he's interesting guy. He worked uh, for 16 years on Wall Street, made millions of dollars, and then uh, 2011 uh, was the culmination of his crisis where he lost subsequently millions of dollars, and that was prim <laughs> uh, primarily due to actions by the Federal Reserve, um, that wonderful entity that protects the money <laughs> and uh, protects us. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, and he uh, thereafter transitioned to um, entrepreneurship. And volunteerism and a service to others. So uh, we'll discuss his uh, his uh, evolution there, and and also hopefully he can tell us a little bit about a possible podcast that he might be starting in conjunction with uh, Larkin Rose. Uh, so that sounds really interesting, uh, since Larkin Rose is uh, really in like hibernation <laughs> due to his uh, what do you call it the um, the uh, the mirror, right? He's trying to get that done. Yeah. So he's a busy yeah. guy. But uh, what but yeah. Do after that. Yeah, yeah. So you can follow Adam on uh, Facebook, um, Adam Adam Williams or Adam N Williams, the letter N, um, or at Adam N Williams on Twitter and, or, and Instagram. Uh, also, his uh, his email if you want to reach him, uh, rice the um, you know the the food Chinese food rice owl o w l Adam at gmail dot com, and his website which is not up yet uh, will be up soon. Connect with Adam Williams dot com. Um, and he's very open, so he he uh, <laughs> his phone number. If anybody wants to reach him for whatever reason, one six four six two six five zero two nine three. You can Facetime or text. Get a free free ten minute consultation. He's a really open guy. He's not one of those people who's hiding in his bunker with his gun and his gold. And his, uh, his prepared <laughs> not <food>. yet. So, <laughs> so he's open, man. Not afraid of the NSA or any other uh, you know no. <laughs> surveillance state. Um, but uh, but yeah, he's got a couple of businesses going. Um, one of them is the Avatar Course, which is a personal development program. You can, you can tell us more about that. And another one is Be Hip, which is uh, stands for Believe Helping Impact People. Awesome yeah. stuff, and uh, and there's also got an online fitness and wellness coaching program, which yeah. he uses to help people, um, you know, become more uh, slim and healthy and beautiful. So yeah, we need, awesome we man. Definitely need more of that. So Adam, thanks a lot for coming on the show. Oh man, thank you so much for uh, for that wonderful introduction. Appreciate you, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've seen you around Facebook and the different groups, and uh, you know, you always got some something positive to say. You know, which is really awesome. I think a lot of 
uh, anarchists can uh, dwell in the negativity and the dark yeah. and gloomy topics. And people people can can um, you know accuse us of that because you know we're talking about like you know debt and fiat currency and in sure. you know economic slavery <laughs> and yeah. uh, you know drone strikes and war and you know torture and all this stuff mean nasty stuff that government does. But uh, I think what's important to focus on is what we are in favor of, right? We're not just right. we're not just anti-state, anti-government, anti-police, anti-military, but we're pro freedom, pro peace, pro love, pro family, pro happiness, and all that kind of fun stuff, right? Hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah, exactly right. Um, couldn't agree more. I, I definitely see that uh, a lot in the, in the liberty movement. Uh, you know, a lot of. Uh, Folks, I mean, I, negative wouldn't be necessarily the most descriptive word. Just jaded, cynical, right, and yeah. and really don't don't appreciate other other people. And mm -hmm. I and I think that the the topics of compassion, empathy, and appreciating others that is really the conduit to opening hearts and to changing minds. Um, and that takes a little patience, which uh, which you know, unfortunately, is is often in short supply, but. Um, you know, I, I think we look throughout history, 300 years ago, people were saying the world's going to end. Now people are saying the world's going to end, you know, they'll be saying the same thing in, in, in 300 years. Uh, <laughs> and, and the huge things are changing, huge, huge things are changing behind the scenes, especially as much as I understand the financial markets and, and, uh, and how, and how market structure works and liquidity and, um, in terms of manip manipulations by central banks, huge, there's going to be huge consequences, but no matter what happens, what matters is really the investment you're making in yourself right now to grow your consciousness, to feel better, to be healthier, to vibrate on a higher frequency. Then extend that to your tribe and your family, then your community, and then from there. So that's that's the way to do it from the bottom up. Yeah, yeah, I definitely agree. Um, you know, it, I think we can reach more people uh, rather than trying to tear down their beliefs and their illusions, even though we think they're wrong, we still have to say, you know, what we would want to replace that with, right? So, yeah. so I don't, I don't necessarily, for that reason, I don't necessarily use the word anarchist. Although I know some people are trying to take back that word and use it and try to correct people. Um, but I, I, you know, when when I when people ask me what do I do, I say, you know, I talk about universal morality. I talk about um, economics, right? I talk yeah. about free markets. You know, you talk about the beauty of freedom. You know, and, exactly, and, right. I, uh, I love what, what Dr. Robert Higgs uh, said. He's got a great meme that I posted. And he said, quit wasting your time on politics. Focus on principles. Focus on principles. And then I also add philosophy. Yeah. Um, the, 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 the business of the United States will continue until foreigners can stop lending us money until it ends. That's really where, where we are. So you know, talking about politics is a total dead end. I've, mm. I've moved on past that. Um, and I'm just talking about principles and philosophy now. <laughs> Makes more sense. Yeah, beautiful. So so please go into your your evolution, you know, how you started out and what got you to where you sure. are today. Yeah, so um, very quickly on my on my personal background, grew up all over the country, went to, went to high school and college in Texas. When I was 17 years old, I had had uh, 17 addresses wow. um you know i had like eight or nine houses you know through through high school and, and then the temporary places before the house was ready mm -hmm. and um you know my father was a businessman and, and he uh he ran cable systems so we really had uh we we're very fortunate to um be able to get any education that we wanted my sister and i i went to rice my sister went to duke you know i was you know made self-made millionaire on wall street from zero and hmm. she's a, a doctor and there to a surgeon. So, you know, we're very fortunate to be able to travel the world. This is my 31st country to, uh, to visit. Wow. So I'm, I'm really up there. <laughs> um, been all over the world. This is my fourth country to live in. I've lived in France twice. I speak French fluently and, and lived in Australia. So, um, just was very fortunate to really say, I guess I was kind of always a voluntarist, but I definitely didn't know that language. I, my behavior was complete statist uh -huh. until, uh, <laughs> until about 2011 when, when, uh, when things got destroyed and I, I started to ask more questions about life. Um, but, uh, you know, throughout, you know, high school and college and, and coming onto wall street, I was fully in the ego side of the, the intellectual consciousness of ego and competition. It was everything I was learned about was focused on the, the external. Okay. Achievement, money, success, power, 
stuff. Mm. You know, that, that was how I defined success because that's how it was defined for me, right? And, uh, and certainly on Wall Street, that was the same. So I started out trading equity derivatives at Merrill Lynch out of undergrad. I did an internship program the summer before my senior year. Traded equity derivatives. Uh, you know, it was like a four hundred million dollar business the first year on the desk. I remember, hmm. I remember I got my first bonus. Uh, you know, it was uh, ten thousand hmm. dollars, and uh, my last bonus was nine hundred thousand dollars. But I was so so excited when it was ten thousand dollars. I was like, yeah, mm-hmm. and I was all, all all fired up. And I was like, I'm gonna go to Atlantic City. I was like twenty two, <laughs> and then I, the the guy next to me, I didn't know he was getting one point three million. But wow. uh, you know, the guy who was he was ten years older. But I, I ended up getting getting pretty close to that. <laughs> so um, you know, work my uh, every year was more. In two thousand three, I went uh, from uh, equity derivative trading to convertible bonds. So I traded convertible bonds from. 2003 till 2010. And 2010 is when the whole roller coaster basically ended. Uh, as you mentioned, the Federal Reserve, uh, instead of fixing, or instead of, I mean, like fixing, <laughs> they were the ones who caused the problem. Uh, <laughs> instead, of, instead of the government and the central banks, and Jeff Berwick says it correctly, that the two biggest enemies of mankind are the state and the central banks. Hmm. Instead of actually fixing what happened, uh, Jeffrey Tucker puts the, the correct, the best sentence to what happened 2008, 2009. What, what, most importantly, what happened is that banks chain, and their banks were corrupt before, but it was not the same as 2008. That's when the rule of law went out the window and they just changed the rules. So banks went from facilitators of commerce before 2008 to stewards for government debt so that it would not be exposed to market risk premiums. That is a very succinct way to say what happened. Hmm. So after that, they engaged in quantitative easing, which you've heard about, and the interest rate suppression also created volatility suppression. And those two things, interest rates and volatility, is what made convertible uh, bonds valuable. So they just, I don't know, 30% of the people, 40% of the people got fired in that business. And it just ended, and that's happened to many different businesses. Uh, again, when you have cronyism, corruption, things just don't move the way they normally do, and uh, you have to adjust. So, uh, long story short, um, my income went down about from low seven figures, which would take me ten years to get. I had seven figures saved with hmm. all my assets, and my income went down to low six figures basically in eighteen months, and that completely blew up my my process. It wasn't like I had won the lottery and you know, just bought stuff. Like I worked for it for a long time and right. did all the savings and maxed out the 401k and everything. Um, but I just got margin called. I had, you know, instead of buying three, $300,000 houses, I bought and rented two of them out. I bought a million dollar house and <laughs> that got destroyed and it's just, wow. everything was wrong. I was losing a hundred thousand dollars a month wow. the first uh, six months of 2011. And, and, uh, you know, 2000, my first marriage ended, uh, beginning of 12. And that was, that was the big wake up uh, call to, to get honest with myself and see what I was doing and look at my beliefs. And it was just magic. I'm really grateful for that, that crisis. And, and I remember I told a friend, uh, what, everything that happened to me that year. And he said, Adam, I don't know if I could have survived that, <laughs> but I did survive. And, uh, what I've done since then is just learn, educate myself, learn about voluntarism, learn about, uh, you know, natural law, learn about, um, hmm. empathy and compassion. And, uh, I've, I'm not a parent yet. I, I don't have children, but I have, have learned about peaceful parenting. Like I know you're, you're excited about, and just, mm-hmm. it, it all goes together. It's, it's really one side of statism and central banks and government and debt and war. And the other side is entrepreneurship, voluntarism, Austrian economics, natural law, and love and happiness. So hmm. that's where I'm at now. Wow. <laughs> what a roller coaster. <laughs> yeah, it was something else. And and so now you're um so, so now you've started businesses as a result of that, right? Yeah, so, that's you, been, so go into a little bit of those businesses. Sure. That's been a process. Um I was, you know, from two thousand uh, you know eleven through when I came here a, a few months ago, or last month I came here uh, at the end of April. Um I was still working on Wall Street. In, in, Manhattan, in Manhattan or in Connecticut and living in Connecticut and just trying to uh, kind of hold on to my stuff, try to hold on to my house, try to hold on to my cars and all the, the stuff. And it was so liberating to just leave everything hmm. 
I literally left everything yeah. and sold everything and just came here with a suitcase and laptop and phone <laughs> to uh, to just create the free space to really create what I wanted because based on living in the second most expensive area in the country with the you know challenges and stuff that I had created and stress and whatever, um, it was challenging to do both at the same time. So I'm mm-hmm. very fortunate that I had the, the freedom, not having kids, uh, to, uh, to just dedicate all my time to making it go faster. But for people who, um, who want to do these things part time also works amazing, works amazing for people. Uh, just didn't work for me. So I, I'm, I, I think when I really learned how the, the, how bad the matrix was, I just didn't want to be a part of it anymore. And I think I resisted that for a few years. So I'm grateful to be living my principles here. Uh, the businesses, uh, yeah, I've been working on these for, for really a couple of years, but now the, the application is there. Uh, I've been involved with the Avatar course since 2012. That is a personal development program that a few hundred thousand people have uh, have taken in, in 30 years. It's a course on consciousness and beliefs and spirituality and a, a deep dive into uh, exploring uh, how how everything works. It's it's the most wonderful education on the planet, in my opinion, and uh, most importantly. You know, as I told you, I've been, you know, an officer at the the biggest investment banks, and I've been uh, a letterman on rice football, and I've been in with all kinds of great groups of people. But the avatar, uh, Sangha, Sangha means spiritual family, is the kindest group of people on the planet. So, uh, the next course is July second through tenth. I'm doing it free info hours with people. Uh, it's in Orlando, and I'll be back in the states because I can only stay here for uh, three months, right, without a visa. So I'll be back in the States in July to deliver that course. Um, number two uh, is an amazing business. I've been in um, the human entre- entrepreneurship space for a couple years. Uh, I see that as a way to leverage technology and people. That, my definition of human entrepreneurship is uh, developing leaders. Okay, So I love, I love doing that and, cool. and working with people. Um, very quickly, I'll give you my personal paradigm about entrepreneurship, yeah, uh, which I thought of. So. You're familiar with natural law and yep. love and fear. Love and fear is right. the, the opposites, right? right. Uh, fear leads to the government, and right. love leads to, to anarchy, which means no masters and no slaves. Right. So um, there's four kinds of entrepreneurs, and uh, they move from fear towards love. So the first kind of entrepreneur that was ever invented is the political entrepreneur. That is the tick. That is the uh, hmm. the uh, the what's the what's the thing that in the, the the uh, leech. That's the leech. <laughs> right, right. That's the that's the person who uses uh, coercion and violence to mm-hmm. to create their their money. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, we don't want to be that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and hopefully, this whole political system that we have is just just collapses under its own weight soon. But we'll we'll see what happens. The three other kinds of entrepreneurs are all in the love in the love uh, space. So that you have the capital entrepreneur, person who has money, saves money, earns money, builds a business, employs people. We all understand that. A little bit more loving is the technology entrepreneur, uh, which I'm getting to do in this new business. Um, the technology entrepreneur is the engineer who creates technology to really help people. The person who invo- invented the phone so you and I can talk right now. I mean, people forget that these free Skype calls were not available 10 years ago. Right. You know, it's I mean, th- th- there's so many opportunities now to create your own freedom on the Internet. It's unbelievable. People don't really understand this yet, but it's getting there. And then the most loving type of entrepreneur is the human entrepreneur who develops leaders. That's the, because you're working with people directly. Mm-hmm. So this business is um, not open in the, in the States right now. You can be a customer. You can get a placeholder for when, the, when uh, it opens in the States. I actually had a, 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 friend, I have a couple of friends that I've called before I even made an announcement, just my best friends, and uh, they already said they're in. So mm-hmm. um, this is going to be very exciting. Uh, and then finally uh, is a project I started um, – uh, just a few weeks ago when I came out here is uh, using all my knowledge uh, in the fitness area. Uh, you know, I still can uh, fortunately bench press uh, 225 pounds uh, 13 times. And, uh, <laughs> nice. you know, uh, and, and I, I, did a, I did a round off backflip the other day for a video. <laughs> so I, I, can, I, you know, I still can nice. <laughs> move my body at 38 years old and have low body fat. So helping people with that. And cool. I, again, I can help people online and, uh, and automate that stuff and really deliver value pe- to people wherever they are. So those are the three projects. Wow. That's so cool. Yeah. Entrepreneurship definitely is something that I think a lot of people – they often underestimate the power of that 
you know it's like so many people you know have this idea you know i'm gonna i'm gonna go to college i'm gonna you know get a degree so i can get a job <laughs> you know how many people do that and like i want to start my own business not not many <laughs> No, I mean it's 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 about it's about nine. We, we went through the numbers to that tonight in the presentation. Is that the literally what's amazing is I'm mean, I'm not Dutch, but this company just started in Holland a couple weeks ago, and because I'm you know on Facebook and they figured things out, I I found out about it. And I'm the the first distributor, you know, our second distributor here. So we mm-hmm. have the first big meeting on Sunday. So we had a presentation tonight and went through the Robert Kiyosaki. Uh, do you have you heard of Robert oh, Kiyosaki? Oh, that guy. Dad, poor dad. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, read, so I read a couple of books. The, yeah. the quadrant. You know, you have the quadrant. You you know, you have the employee and um, the self, the 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 self the um, the sole proprietor. Those oh. that's ninety percent of people, mm-hmm. and it's trading time for money. The business owns you. You know, you have no freedom. You're on the rat race. Right. And it's a, jo- a job is just above broke. That's yeah. what a job means. Yeah. And and that's just that's the indoctrination, right? And 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 guess what? For the hundred years of the hundred and three years now, the Federal Reserve, that that indoctrination actually worked. Like in for a lot of the time in 1956, despite uh, your and my names and skin color, mm. with with our um, work ethic, intelligence, and everything, you and I would be set, bro, 1956. We'd hmm. we have one job, you work 40 hours, you you know, you know, have plenty of money, you have your house taken care of, kids, and nothing extravagant, but kids mm-hmm. go to college now mm-hmm. because of the inflation of the Federal Reserve and because of all the cronyism and corruption in society. You'd think with all the new technology, we would have more free time, but because of cronyism and corruption, it's that that's that's actually stolen from us and we're extracted from. So that whole paradigm of work 40 years for 40 hours a week and retire on 40 percent of what you're earning in a pension, it mm. doesn't exist anymore. And 50 percent of the jobs that are currently available now are going to be done by robots, algorithms and computers in just 10 years. Right. So yeah. the, the do it yourself process is not only not only what gives you freedom, not only what allows you to work very hard for not much money in the beginning, but build something that is actually sustainable and passive income long term. It's just simply where everything is going um, in the next 10 years. So it makes sense to learn about it now. Yeah, yeah. You got to uh, you got to adapt to the changing world. I mean, you know, the Internet uh, opened up so many possibilities. Like you said, Skype and, you know, Facebook and Google yeah. and Wikipedia and YouTube. And like how many things can you learn online? And, and like to me, so many. what that does is fundamentally render colleges and uni- universities irrelevant and obsolete. completely irrelevant, <laughs> completely irrelevant. I mean, look, I, you know, I went to Rice University. I, I'm, I'm grateful I have a degree from there. Um, I, I'm certain that the things that they're learning in the nanotechnology uh, lab there are, are, are quite amazing. But when you're talking about the majority of degrees now that you can learn, like Khan Academy, right. you can teach yourself. I mean, it's just all there for free. And you can start a business with less than $2,000. You can start a business for less than $2,000. Um, that, that can sustain your family. If you align the right people, the right timing, the right products, you still have to use your intuition. Hmm. It's crazy that I think one of the, one of the biggest things about moral hazard and what the federal reserve and government are doing is that they've introduced so much moral hazard into our society that people don't even trust their intuition anymore hmm. because the, you know, everything's too big to fail. Everything, everything is, Oh yeah, it's, it's taken care of. So Really, as an entrepreneur, you have to really engage your intuition, find the right people, find the right process for you that matches your passions mm. so that it doesn't feel like work. Because it is a lot of work to be an entrepreneur. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, uh, like, like you said, I think the state, in conjunction with the Federal Reserve, like you said, try to um, minimize risk in the world. When in fact, you know, you can't. It's impossible to eliminate. They're increasing it. They're yeah. increasing it so exactly. dramatically. So dramatically. <laughs> One of the things I'm glad about living in Holland for, I mean, I mean I, I'm going to probably looks like I'm going to be here off and on for the next two years uh, launching this business and going into different countries in Europe. And uh, I'm so excited for July. I'll be I'll be flying to the, do the Avatar course uh, July 2nd through 10th in Orlando. Then I'm going to be uh, on a short walkabout and I fly back to Slovenia. I get to go to Slovenia. Hopefully Melania Trump's going to jump out of a cake. <laughs> uh, at our convention, and it'll be the first European uh, convention for this uh, this B hit business. Nice. And the the, the 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 town I'm going to sounds like sex. It's like 
<laughs> Ljubljana, something like that. It's looking at like this sounds fantastic. So listen, Jim, you, you know Jim Cramer from uh, Mad Money, the investor. Uh, probably, but yeah. Yeah, you would have you would have seen him. Because He's got a show called Mad Money. Uh, he was a hedge fund guy. I used to actually trade for him when I was at Merrill Lynch. Ah. And uh, he, he's, he's pretty famous or infamous type of, type of guy in, yeah. in, in the financial markets now. And he, 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 uh, he says a great thing. He says, uh, it's, there's always a bull market somewhere. No matter what's happening in the world, there's always a place in the world that's getting better, that's deregulating, that mm. has a change in the society, whether it's Myanmar a few years ago opening mm. things up. There's people who went there. They're, they're doing very well. You know, there's always an opportunity, and the internet um, helps you decentralize yourself. Mm. Decentralization is so important, whether we're talking about our income streams um, the, the way we're looking at the world and just, you know, how we can live. Just, you just want to eliminate all dependency from your life. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, I mean the idea of, um, of like hiring people in other countries, like, you know, delegating out pe responsibilities, mm -hmm. you know, I think that, that alone is, is just, just awesome how, yeah. uh, and, 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 you know, I can see how, uh, how people would look at that as like, um, you know, exploitation and, and, uh, you know, um, what do you call that? Um, yeah, just just like slavery. They say you know you're yeah. exploiting these people. These people make you know paying them a two dollars an hour, three dollars an hour. <laughs> Dude, if their if their quality of life has improved from what it was, then that's 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 amazing. And the problem with the problem with globalization is again the cronyism and corruption. It's 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 uh, it's the problem with globalization is things like Federal Reserve doing all their shenanigans and companies. Instead of investing in value, mm. doing doing uh, buyback and borrowing gimmicks, gimmicks to increase their earnings per share for the next quarter. You know, it's 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 really a, a mindset and a philosophy that is wrong. But it's the system that's creating that mindset and philosophy because it incur the incentives are just all wrong. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I remember talking about precious metals to somebody, and they said, um, um, "So the the U.S. dollar." is backed by the federal government. But what backs gold? <laughs> gold yeah. is not backed by anything, right? It's, it's not by it's, <laughs> the, it's the only it's the only asset with no counter, it's the only asset with no counterparty risk. But I thought, it's the only it's the only monetizable asset with no counterparty risk. But I thought Amazing. it was it was just a funny statement. Is it like the, the yeah. it's backed by the full faith and credit of the US government. I'm like, really? Nineteen trillion dollars? That that's really reliable, <laughs> reliable source of backing. Dude, the, the, <laughs> the US government's largest asset is student loans. That's the largest asset they have in the books is student loans. They're, they're, they're negative. If you listen to Simon Black, he does uh, sovereignman.com. Mm. Um, he's by their own admission, they're like negative 17 trillion in mm. debt. That's mm. the, that's their net worth, you know? So <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, think, I don't I mean, know how it's going to turn out. I think that's the next bubble to pop is the student loan uh, bubble. Um, you know, of course, of course, you have the federal, you know, the the dollar Federal Reserve bubble that's been going <laughs> okay, on for like a, a century, but uh, that which will yeah. pop inevitably. But, but I think you know we had the housing crisis, and because it's like it's like yeah. it's like I tell people, you know, uh, tuition is skyrocketing and quality is plummeting. Now, how long do you think that? trend can last right can't it, you can't. know it's just <laughs> can't and and again and why why again everything government touches turns worse right. everything it touches turns worse because right. it's because it's you can't make good from evil you can't make compassion and service from theft it just doesn't it, the equate the math doesn't work right um i you know certainly the founders of the united states were amazing May, amazing, you know, visionaries, and um, whether you you believe in the Constitution or not, and there's a lot of anarchists that are, you know, that hate the Constitution or whatever. You know, it, it was a step in the right direction. But as we've learned, even the even the most limited government has now become the the biggest force for for terror, you mm -hmm. know, in in the world now. And and you know, and it's interesting being over here, bro, because when I talk to the Dutch people, they they think the U.S. is good. Because that's that's their process. When I talk to like the Moroccan people or the Turkish people, they think the U.S. are killers because they see mm. the impact of the Middle right. East policy. So it's very interesting right. uh, being in a different country. Right, right, definitely. And and I mean, I mean, I guess a lot of countries also, you know, look at the U.S. Um, 
as being you know the strong currency of the world right for now yeah. right you know for as, now. As, as long as the US military is out like terrorizing <laughs> people and invading and occupying and you know and forcing people to use it um, you know it will be strong but you know creating that artificial demand but when, w- once i think once these countries you know um, take that take all that uh, U- the US dollar and then and then buy buy uh, you know US property and US assets and all that money comes flowing back to the U.S. That's when you're going to yeah. see the massive in- inflation. That's when you're going to yeah. see the massive inflation. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we, 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 the timing is tough. It could be could have a big deflationary process yeah. before that. Definitely, you know, right? definitely, it, definitely. Who, who knows? I mean, we're, we're we're truly. I mean, people can try to you know bring parallels to Argentina and Zimbabwe mm. and uh, Yugoslavia and you know the even the Weimar Republic in Germany. But dude. We don't have any. We don't have any, any reference points for where we are now. The yeah, debt right. levels are right. so big now. Right. The financial engineering is so crazy yeah. that you know who really knows. I, what I know is, tomorrow, no matter if there's an EMP and there's no electricity, I know people are going to want to feel good, and 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 get be have healthy food and look and look good. That's the, always going to happen, no matter <laughs> what's happening. Uh, in, 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 in the world. So I'm, I'm focused on, uh, delivering value and helping people because that's always going to be in vogue. If, if your business depends on subsidies mm, or right. all kinds of government stuff, I mean, right. I would be diversifying into other things that, um, are more sustainable because who knows how long, you know, things continue the way they are. Yeah. And that's what I love about entrepreneurs is they have this mindset of, um, creating value, you know, cause that's the only creating way, that's value. the only way that you, that you make money is by creating values, creating something that somebody wants to buy voluntarily. Right. That's um, it. You know? And, uh, and so that, and that's how you improve the world is basically by voluntary exchange. I think it's a very, very simple thing. You know, when you just allow people to trade and produce and create and innovate, the world improves, you know, people lift themselves the out of poverty, you know, child labor disappears, you know, all this, all, all this worry, you know, horrible things disappear. Yeah, uh, I totally, I totally agree. Yeah, 100% right. So, so uh, please go into your, um, your Larkin Rose podcast and, and what's that going to be? Yeah. About? So yeah, Larkin's awesome. I haven't met him in person. I've been fortunate to meet, uh, I would say probably, Larkin and, and Mark Passio are, are two of my uh, my biggest uh, philosophical you know uh, folks to really uh, listen to on, on these topics of anarchy. I mean, of course, I le- love reading the older guys and the Austrian economists and uh, you know all those folks. Right. Uh, one of my favorite books is The Law by Frederick Bastiat. It's a wonderful book. Yeah, seventy four pages. Yeah. So uh, yeah, Larkin and I have had uh, plenty of conversations on the phone. Definitely fond of each other uh, and, and had had several chats. And uh, we have an idea to do uh, a podcast called uh, Good Anarchist, Bad Anarchist. And so I'll, I'll be the good anarchist. He's maybe the bad one confronting people and uh, forcing him to look at everything. I'm the one that's going to be appreciating where they're coming from and, and uh, introducing more empathy and compassion to the process. So uh, we, can see, we can see who converts more sadists. <laughs> what, is it going to be like a man in the street type thing? Uh, you know, we, we, it's, that's a great, that's a good, we're brainstorming right now. So oh, yeah, yeah I, I don't know. I mean, you know, he has his, he has his awesome rant that he does, yeah. uh, you know, now. So, uh, when he, when he, uh, comes up periscope from what he's doing and I, I have a bit more free time after I build these couple of things I'm doing the next few months, then mm-hmm. we'll, we'll get it in there. It'll definitely be happening before the election and we'll be promoting it. And it's going to be fun. Yeah, 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 yeah. Larkin has yeah immense um, experience talking to states and analyzing how you know how they think and the psychology and all yeah. that. Um, yeah. Although he can be uh, he can be pretty rough and coarse and like just hit you know hit him with a two by four over the head with <laughs> intell- sure. intellectual t- and that works for Dude, some mo- people. You know, it works for some people. Works great. I mean, look look at the success of the uh, of the message to the voting cattle video yeah i mean right. that, that 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 that's an excerpt right of a much longer story right. but people totally got it and right. i remember when i the first time i heard that i listened to it like 10 times it was it was such a sane voice mm. you know and it just all made so much sense um definitely one of the the first videos i just you know fell in love with of his so yeah 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 definitely um <laughs> one of my, my friends, uh, one of my friends who's not really an anarchist, but I used to work with him. He's a chiropractor. He, I think it was like Thanksgiving, and he showed that video to his uh, his sister, who's like a hardcore Democrat, and uh, she didn't talk to him for like three days after. 
But you know what? I mean, well, I, I, I'm, I'm wondering. I'm wondering how many how many voluntarists we've created at the federal government level that are watching all of our posts and watching our Skype call right now. I mean, right. the, these guys have to be learning something. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know, I know. I went through that phase where um, you know I was learning about this, learning about the state and what government is and monopoly yeah. and violence and all that. And and I, and I and I went inward a little bit. I stopped you know stopped being active on Facebook. And I'm like, how do I how do I search for things online so that people don't see? You know. So I, you yeah. Yeah. Start page on, and then and then I realized like you know what it doesn't it doesn't even matter. Dude, come it, come it, at it, me, bro. It, it come does, at it, me. It, it I mean, what, what are you gonna do to me? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Exactly. It doesn't like, even yeah. matter. And and when you when you self censor, I think you're already admitting defeat that that these yeah. people do control you and they do have sway yeah. over your life and and the things that no. you say and the things that you do, and that's unfortunate. You know, it's 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 so sad when people do that. They they um. They're, they're, we need to remove our attention from them. Right. We need to remove our attention from them. They're destroying their own potential, you know, yeah. by by acknowledging them. And and, and you know, my my uh, recommendation for people all the time is just peaceful non-compliance, right? Not actively peaceful. resistant. Peaceful non-compliance. Yeah. Just, just like not, not um, you know, like because of course when you say the word anarchy, you know, people think of disorder and violence yeah, and mayhem. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And, like, and, people, and people have told me like, it's like, what, what, okay, let's do the revolution. When's the revolution going to start? I'm ready. I'm like, no, <laughs> it's not like that. <laughs> you no, know? It's about no. just understanding philosophical concepts and being a decent human being. That's it. <laughs> Oh, I have a question for you yeah. because I, you know, you were mentioning uh, Larkin Rose and you know his ab- abrasiveness. And I, I mean, Mark Passio is even more abrasive. That guy, <laughs> when, you, when, you, when you get when you get him, get him, get him privately, bro. At a, I've you know I met him three times uh-huh. at an event, dude. That that dude, he's he is so hardcore. <laughs> and 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 he, I watched his video the other day, and it was yeah, I wouldn't say it was disturbing. It was interesting. <laughs> he he said he's now let go of the possibility of this being solved through consciousness. Mm-hmm. That it's going to have to come to violence. Mm-hmm. I I'm not there yet. I I can I st- I'm going to continue to try to work to raise consciousness and do sure. this peacefully. Yeah. Uh, where do you stand on that paradigm? Between well, my, me and Mark. My, my website is called peacefulanarchism. Uh, <laughs> yeah. dot com, uh, and and I definitely because my my whole approach uh, focuses on. Peaceful parenting, unschooling, homeschooling, and um, yeah. uh, attachment parenting. You know, I, I'm. You know, I, I remember hearing about Stefan Molyneux saying about mm-hmm. how um, you know, and he, and he focuses on that a lot. In that, you know, we can reach a lot of people by talking to the adults and trying to change their minds and recognize these philosophical concepts. But yeah. that's difficult, right? That's really, really difficult. But you can do it. But then there's another way, which is just raising kids correctly the first time because yeah. you know and and in that way you're mm. raising a new generation of peaceful gentle compassionate people that, yeah. that don't support violent institutions right and 100 percent and statism starts at home yeah yeah so that's that's definitely where my focus is you know i i, I yeah. like to interview a lot of um unschooling uh mothers and and bloggers and um awesome. you know people who champion that because uh i think that's one of the awesome the best ways to promote peace is uh, starting with your own kids and how you raise your kids, right? Um, yeah, because they're they're gonna they're gonna inhabit the world of tomorrow. They're gonna create the world of tomorrow, right? Yes, yes. So yeah, you got you have it exactly right. Now, um, what do you think about? Okay, I have two questions. So, um, what do you think about using the word anarchy versus voluntarism? Because for me, I love using the word voluntarism and voluntarist because. Yeah. It begs more questions. What does right. that mean? Right, you know? right, right, right. Instead, versus like I have to re-educate you on this, what anarchy actually means. Yeah. Um, and then second, voting. What do you think about those? All right. Uh, so, so the simple, simple questions. Uh, <laughs> mm-hmm. um, yeah, so, so um, when I first created my website, I, I guess I did it pretty quickly. And my wife's like, are you sure you want to call it peaceful anarchism i'm like yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and she constantly yells at me i told you this is a very contentious <laughs> word you should have used something nicer i'm like that's why the peaceful is in there you got to make sure yeah <laughs> yeah yes, you know? it's a great it's a great juxtaposition it's a yeah. great juxtaposition peaceful it makes anarchism. Sense. Yeah. yeah yeah so um, awesome. so i definitely huh? hear what you're saying and and i would yeah. not uh i do not go up to people in public and say i'm an anarchist i don't yes you know, yeah. if i'm around my friends and like, sure. like my homeschooling friends, and then and then a, n- a new person comes, and, I'm, and I start to talk to them. Sometimes they like to uh, give them like a, a, a like a like a little shock and say, "Oh, by the way, he's an anarchist." <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, well, "Okay, now I got to spend like ten minutes explaining that 
<laughs> justification, <laughs> you know. But um, that's it. but yeah. So usually w- the way I talk is this: I just ask questions to people. I probe them yeah. to see what they're same thing. You know how what they, they think. How yeah, they, how yeah, they yeah. think, and and you just yeah. I, that's all I do. I just ask questions and and exactly. Be, you know, people have described my. You know, some of my friends they have described my questions in that in that they say I'm very inquisitive and I even ask questions that other people would never dare to ask other people, yeah. but I ask it in such a way that they say it, it would be rude for them not to answer. I do the same <laughs> thing. I do the same thing. And I, I think that's the, again, that, that's, it's meeting people where they are. Right. It's, I mean, it, it's kind of, I mean, it took me nine hours of Mark Passio's presentation for me to understand natural law. I'm not going to try to explain to someone in 20 seconds because it's just, that's just that just doesn't right. make sense you know right, if they're right. if they're hardcore right. you know supporting government you know so you got to you know meet people where they are right. and move them up the next level of consciousness from where they are <laughs> right. yeah and, and the other thing i like to focus on is um like you know i tell people you know when i say i'm an anarchist all these hypothetical questions come into mind like oh well without the government how are you going to feed the poor how are you going to make the roads how are you going to defend things how are you going to you know, protect us from evil people, you know, all these kind of ridiculous things, which can easily be answered, but I don't want to go down that rabbit hole, you know? So Mm -hmm. I I say, forget about all that. Forget about all the complexities. Just make it simple, okay? Are you a decent person? Do you use violence to solve problems in your daily life? No? Good. So just live like that, all right? (laughs) And hopefully you can be an example for other people that are going to want to live like that as well, right? Because people are saying, yeah. you know, for your thing to exist, everybody's got to be an anarchist. No, no, it's not like that. It's just like it's leading, like leading your life as an example that other people want to emulate because you're an inspiration to other people. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> does, does, does everyone in the world have to be have to be physically fit for the for the health of the world to improve? Of course not. You know, it doesn't make any sense. Exactly. Um, yeah. No, I I totally uh, I totally agree with that. Okay. How about voting? So so voting. I uh, well no, I don't vote. I, the last time I voted was two thousand eight for Obama. Uh, it's a sin. Yeah, I, I, I voted for I, Obama in two thousand eight. You did. Okay. <laughs> I was uh, a statist then. It's the only the, the only reason I did. I didn't really care for voting actually. But the only reason I did is because my family is full of Democrats. And so they're like, you know, who am I going to vote for? The Democrat. All right, vote for the Democrats. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, it's a it's a sin that I've always, uh, you know, been confessing, confessing, confessing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I voted I voted for Gary Johnson in 2012, so at least I I was better then. Right, right, right. <laughs> but um, but no, I I um. I don't think that, uh, you know, any kind of, um, you know, palpable improvement in people's lives will come from voting or appealing to to the state. And so I say, you know what, like like you said before, politics is a waste of time. It's a waste of time. I say, say, you know, a waste of energy. You want to make yourself productive? Focus on yourself. So, so be productive. Yeah. So so the first thing is focusing on yourself. That's the first thing. Improve yourself, make yourself a useful and, and decent and moral and compassionate human being. And then you know you you that will emanate outwards, and then yeah. you raise your kids, hopefully to be similar, independent, yes. re, you know, self reliant individuals, and and then uh, hopefully that will spread, right? So always focus yeah. on yourself. You know, you you know when you try to vote, you know, you're like you know you you want to force your opinion onto or you, no. or use a politician yeah. to fo- impose your opinion on other people. It's just. You know, it's the violence in the system that a lot of people don't recognize. You know, everyone's like, you know, it's yes. your constitutional right. I just, I was just in the library today, and they're like, you know, it's a constitutional right to vote. You know, and, and all this kind of crap. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> I mean, look, man. I mean, I, I grew, I grew up. I mean, as you can tell, I'm, I'm a melanin enhanced, and you know, melanin enhanced <laughs> people, you know, got voting rights later. Right, and, right. And a lot of people, you know, died to get those rights. Right. So I grew up with that. That's that's the mindset, right? right and right. I I grew, I grew up that government is a force for good. Government protects you. Government right. protects minorities. That's all lies. The whole right. entire thing is one big scam. It's mm. one big value extraction mechanism mm. for the dark occultists and deciders and indoctrinators and the deep state agents who run the government. That's all the entire matrix is. So yeah, the best thing is just to be the example. And moreover on being an example, one thing I definitely observe in the liberty movement a lot is people who, who are all big on philosophy, but zero on execution, zero on any type of uh movement forward on their on their lives or mm. other people's lives to make them better mm. um a lot of i see tons of people that are like not even working and on government government assistance on disability and stuff 
complaining about government. It's like, dude, <laughs> get, 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 like, get, get your, you know, for instead of shaming statists through their beliefs, which and their their beliefs do deserve to be shamed, uh, certainly that that are violent beliefs, but. The, the better way to inspire is to be the example, create a life of freedom and prosperity and service and love right. that other people want to have. Right. And then, then they find out about your philosophy versus, you know, someone saying you're a fucking idiot because, you know, you're, you're a status. You know, right. I, I, that's just, that's my personal opinion. Yeah. And, and one, and to take that a step <sighs> further is like when, when, uh, when, you know, let's say, let's say, let's say people in business, like let's say my mother, she has a business for like 30 years. And yeah. you know she she's a you know Bernie Sanders supporter and everything, and so she advocates yeah. for for you know fifteen dollars minimum wage, right? You know these people need to be you know like Verizon's on strike over here and everything. And yeah. so fifteen dollars minimum wage, corporate greed, and all that kind of stuff. And I'm like I'm like all right, so <laughs> so it, whatever you're paying your workers right now, if they ask for double or triple. Would you give it to them? <laughs> you know, um, and why or why not? Right. So, uh, so yeah. that that's one thing. And the other thing is, if you really want these people to be paid fifteen dollars, like I don't know, somebody works at Walmart or McDonald's or, yeah. or wherever, yeah. you want these people to pay fifteen. Why don't you employ them? And or why don't you create a business and then you would give them fifteen if if you think they're worth that much? But if they're not, <laughs> then that's just losing money for everybody. That's just you know, and and, and you know, businesses who are forced to pay that for people who are. Who, ha- who don't contribute that much value, the business will go under, and then everybody's unemployed. <laughs> it's 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 a, it's a complete you know, you know the people pushing for the for the uh, fifteen. I think a lot of the people behind the the push for fifteen are the multinational corporations because it's all it's all it's all strategies to kill small business, right. and increase yeah. increase consolidation. No right. one thinks about it that way. Right. Almost almost no one understands how the Federal Reserve works. Right. It's no shame. I was a, a seven figure earner, seven figure net worth person on Wall Street. Didn't understand how the Fed works because I didn't I didn't understand the philosophy. Mm. Right. If you if you don't understand the philosophy, you can't. And the, and the principles, you can't really learn how things are, are, are working. This, I think, is the biggest challenge in the United States because as much as there are people like you and I doing everything we can to educate people and, and spread their love, there's people falling asleep you know, through technology and media and indoctrination twice as fast. And the, the, because people don't understand the, the problems and how they came, people don't understand – the Federal Reserve. They don't understand Bretton Woods in the 40s to create mm. OPEC. They don't understand 1971 going off the gold standard. Mm. They don't understand because it's a it's a frog in a vat of hot water, right? right? That's right. the whole thing with the U.S. It's yeah. like turn the temperature up on on us, uh, you know, every year, brother. With the food here, because this is my my fourth country to, to live in, I, you know, um, and uh, the food here is the best. Hmm. I haven't lived outside the country, uh, for 16 years. You know, I'm going to be here for, for almost three months for nine weeks. Um, and the, I, I'm literally feel like I'm time traveling when I eat food sometimes because <laughs> I remember this is what grain used to taste like when I was eight. This is what, hmm. this is what bread used to taste because there's no GMOs, so there's no chemicals. Hmm. The, the, the standards for food are so high and it's cheaper Everything that's three or four dollars for organic food in the states is one or two euros here. It's so interesting because they don't tax the organic guys and subsidize the mm. corn guys mm. here like, like as much as they do in the states. Mm. You know, uh, other other issues are are worse. One thing I want to say about the Dutch culture: the Dutch cult, the Dutch society works like the the culture works. Things are the, the correct things here are legal for in terms of civil liberties. And social cohesion, I've never seen a better society hmm. than, than the Dutch culture. So it's, you know, people always think U.S. is number one and whatever. Well, they're number one on military expenditures and, you know, and debt. But, you know, um, in terms of some major other issues, the, the USA of 1987, just, you know, 1986 doesn't exist anymore. And it's, a, it's, been, it's been subsumed by crony capitalism and the military industrial pre- pre- uh, complex and it's our consent that allows it to continue, and we just need to remove our consent. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, um, you know, it's like one. Uh, I, mean, I mean, a common meme that uh, that illustrates that is, you know, the uh, the politician on the plank with the people supporting, uh, you know, supporting the politician <laughs> over the cliff, right? And all they have to do mm. is step off. And yet, and the other mm. one is is um, 
I heard this uh, Stefan Molyneux said that uh, it's like we're we're all constantly blowing hot air and keeping this whole entire system afloat with our hot air, yeah. <laughs> with our no, participation. It's, and it's very simple. It's a very simple thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's there's many ways. Like you said, I, I love that phrase. I'm going to use that more often. Peaceful mm-hmm. non-compliance. I don't comply. I don't. I don't. The, these these rules are nonsense. They're they're writing. What is it? Hundreds of new rules a day. Mm. How can you pot? How can you possibly comply with all these rules? Ignorance There's of the so law much, is no excuse. <laughs> but but guess what? But, but, but when the police don't know the it. law, when the, police, when the police don't know the law, it's no problem. Right. When, when, the, when they when they make a mistake, when Timothy Geithner doesn't doesn't file his taxes, you know when you know then it's no mistake. You know I mean it's it's a it's a complete farce yeah. that there are groups of humans that have rights. Right. That other that other humans don't have. It's a complete abomination of natural law. Right, right. Um, and uh, you know, I like the way Mark Stevens uh, puts it, which is uh, you know, that fundamentally, government doesn't exist. Fundamentally, it's just statism. It's the belief in authority. The yeah, belief that some just, people just, have an have an hallucination, ex- have an exemption to morality that other people don't have. Yes. So, so basically, yeah. Mark Stevens describes uh, the state as uh, men and women that w- with guns forcing you to pay them. That's it. That's it. That's, that's it. All, that's, that's it. That's, that's it. All it is. That's all it is. All it is is theft and coercion. That's all it is. And I mean, look, man. Uh, there's been there's been improvements in the level of consciousness. There's been trainings and research, and certainly coming out of the grain area. I think that was the first money was grain. That was the first thing that was ever saved. Right. right. And that was the first kind of value, and and that was the yeah. the, the beginning of it. And you know, was the, the, the knowledge of voluntarism understood then? Of course not. You know, yeah. it's a, it's a process, you know, but just because things have always existed doesn't mean they need to. The biggest things that en- enable a, a free society, a stateless society of voluntarism now are the three things, the internet, blockchain technology, and higher consciousness. Those are the three things that that literally can end war, yeah. can can end can end the nation state, right. and can enable liberty and freedom and uh, cooperation and collaboration to, to start to happen on this planet. Oh yeah, oh yeah. The internet, the internet is going to be the um, the death knell to statism and central banking and you know all these decrepit dinosaur institutions. Just di- <laughs> dinosaur man, dude. I, the other day, I think I saw the U.S. government still. They run their the nuclear arsenal on floppy disks. <laughs> they have floppy disks somewhere. <laughs> you know, it's like. <laughs> so so um so would please tell my listeners uh, when you yeah. when you um you know started learning more about the Federal Reserve. You say like around that crisis time you started learning more. Yeah. What, how did you learn? Was it through books, through podcasts, through videos, like or YouTube video? Where did you learn more? Yeah, I, mean, I read the Creature from Jekyll Island. Um, so that's, that's probably the, the best book, you know, on, on the creation. Um, so I read that in, I guess it would have been early 2012, mm-hmm. uh, right in the beginning of my process, watched a lot of videos. I mean, the history of your enslavement, and right. there's, there's, there's a million, right. uh, video videos on the fed. Um, and so, yeah, primarily that, that book and, and then just, you know, many, many videos and then, then just research and reading articles. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, Stefan Mani did a did a great job for me. He started mm-hmm. me on on uh, peaceful parenting, uh, mm-hmm. and then from there I learned about volunteerism through him, and then also Jeff Burwick mm-hmm. is the anarchist, and and yeah, yeah, yeah the creature from Jekyll Island was also one of my first books as well. It got me into uh, uh, precious metals and learning about that, and yeah, the, the monetary system. It's so amazing how how little people know about it. And, people don't and, understand how it works. And, and what I love about that. Um, about that arena is that it's usually non-contentious, right? Because when you talk to people about taxes, very contentious. When you talk to people about like foreign policy, very contentious. When you talk to people about you know immigration, very contentious, right? And then you say, so what do you think about fiscal policy? What do you think about monetary system? What do you think about the Federal Reserve? People don't, <laughs> Not, even, have people don't have opinions <laughs> no, about it. No opinion yeah. whatsoever. Yeah, I mean that's. You know, there was a there was a meme the other day that Chewbacca face lady, seventy seventy seven million views in twenty four hours. The the the, the, his, the history of your enslavement, how the Federal Reserve enslaved humanity. It's been a, open for two years, got less than two million views. You know, and that, that that's just, that's just you know, I mean, but uh, yeah. <laughs> Ju- Julie Borowski said something cute. She said, "Look, man, like I rolled my eyes." Said like people watch the. Chewbacca lady video because they wanted to because yeah. it made them feel good, you yeah, know. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. so again, you yeah. know, it's I, I think helping people feel better, 
operate better, be more source of themselves, um, give them an opportunity to really educate themselves about how their mind works and how right. they're stuck and you know right. what they were, where these indoctrinations come from. Right. That's that's why you know raising consciousness is so important to me. And and you know going back to what you said about uh, Mark Passio thinking that um, you know violent um, revolution is is going to be inevitable. I think the extent that violent revolution occurs is the extent that peaceful uh, voluntarists like you and me who are trying to communicate these concepts and helping people to understand them have failed. That's the extent. Uh, uh, whatever. Brother, it's a it's a hundred percent correct. You know. And uh, yeah, um, you know Harry Palmer who who wrote the Avatar course. He says in, in one of his lectures, you know, we 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 have a choice. We can. We can, you know, humanity can be uh, thanking, you know, the the group of the groups of people who who worked to raise consciousness at this critical time, uh, while they are exploring the stars from spaceships, mm -hmm. or uh, there can be a a little a little uh, note on the ground after the nuclear war <laughs> at that, uh, you know, sorry we failed. I mean, uh, it's it's it's, yeah. it's 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 there's really there's really nothing more important than raising consciousness. That that is. In my opinion, that is the most uh, important activity for uh, for individuals and groups to engage in. Yeah, yeah. I was just listening to a little bit of uh, Tom Woods' recent um, uh, speech at the Libertarian Party convention. Yeah. Oh, and sure. One, and one of the things he said, which is pretty awesome, was um, poverty is the natural state of man. Right? We're all born mm -hmm. into poverty. Mm -hmm. Right? It's not mm -hmm. some something that's evil or you know, as a result of exploitation, that's just mm. the, that's just the default, right? Yeah, you and, just and come so in with nothing. The question, <laughs> the question that we have to ask is, where did all this wealth come from, right? Because that took a lot of effort and resources and innovation and creativity by somebody who was willing to take the risk for it. Right. And so that's what we should be thanking. <laughs> that's what we should be thankful for is that we can live in the winter and be very warm and comfortable. <laughs> someone figured it out. I mean, it's, it, it's, yeah. it's, it really, the simple juxtapositions are, are, are absolutely the best. And it, you know, when you look at the U S and you look at how many people are, how many young people are supporting Bernie Sanders and, right. and supporting socialism, which is a complete failed ideology. It's failing in Venezuela right now. And, uh, you know, other parts of the world, um, you, you realize the educational battle that we face, but you know, it, it's all we can do is carve out our little, uh, places of, of peacefulness in, in the world and expand that bubble of love outward. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, when people talk to me, I mean, incidentally, like I hang out with a lot of homeschooling, uh, families and yeah. mothers and everything. And it's amazing how a lot of them support Bernie Sanders. It's really amazing. Maybe it's just, I don't yeah. know if it's a woman thing. I don't know, but <laughs> a lot of them love what he says. <laughs> I like what Matt, Matt Kibbe said the other day. Um, he had a video and he, he, he laid out all the things where he supports Bernie Sanders. And he's, he's right. He's right on cronyism. He's right on the bailouts. He's right on many things. But again, it comes back to principles and, uh, and philosophy. And there are now exists as of the internet, as of the higher consciousness training and research that's happened in the last 40 years, as of blockchain technology, there's a way to do this stuff peacefully. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's, the, that's the focus. Yeah, yeah. Always, always bring it back to the individual. That's that's my my, that's yes. my recommendation to everybody is just lead your life as a more decent person, and that's how you change the world. That's how you make the world a better place. Very simple. Exactly. And you can also you know raise your kids peacefully and create a business and create value. That's wonderful too. But first, just start with yourself. <laughs> keep start, it start with yourself. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. <laughs> Totally. No need to complicate things, but uh, but yeah. Before we go, so please let uh my audience know how they can reach you if they want to follow your work. Sure, great. So uh, the best is Facebook. Uh, follow me on Facebook. Send me a private message. Uh, I'm full on my page, but uh, you know, when I keep building my followers, so that's Adam and Williams. And when you connect with me, I'll, I'll delete someone and add you. Um, nice. So Adam and <laughs> Adam and period Williams. Yeah, I, I, I certainly have plenty of dead weight I can, I can delete. <laughs> um, so Adam and Williams at Facebook. Send me a private message there. Um, uh, you can call me on Facebook. That you can. I, I, that's uh, that's available. Uh, I'm, I'm in uh, six hours ahead of uh, Eastern Standard Time. So just message me to uh, get an appointment. You can email me riceowladam at hotmail dot com. Um, and uh, those are the two best ways. So uh, just go ahead and hit me up on Facebook or on email, and I look forward to uh, connecting with you. If you're looking to, you know, really have 
an amazing nine day spa and <laughs> spa for your consciousness with the most loving people in the world. Ask me about Avatar course. If you're in Europe or Asia or even in the US and you want to be a part of an amazing uh, company delivering uh, the highest quality, healthy nutritional products in the world, ask me about BHIP. And if you are looking to lose weight, whether you have 30, 40, 50 pounds to lose, or, you're know, just looking to uh, change your mindset and really improve your, your fitness, um, I'm helping people with that and ask me about uh, coaching. Awesome. See that people? You wanna you wanna grab a piece of that creativity? Gotta get a hold of Adam, please. <laughs> we need more people like this, please, okay? You know, more more people who are willing to uh, project uh, you know positivity and love and peace and you know less of the uh, you know Islamophobia and terrorism and war and you know we need to hate yeah. hate the brown people over there and hate the sand no. people over there and hate you know it's all about it's just a choice, right? Choice between love and hate. Very simple, you know. That's what I like about philosophy. To me, is simplicity. You know, I'm always seeking. Simplicity. I'm always yeah. seeking simplicity. So yeah, <laughs> awesome conversation, Adam. Um, so if anybody wants to donate to me, you can do so through um, Bitcoin or Patreon. That's Patreon.com/slash Peaceful Anarchism. Help me out. Um, dollar show is all I ask. If you find value in this content, please uh, donate. Um, value for Fantastic. value, right? That, that's the capitalist, yeah. capitalist, free market, capitalist way. If you want to see something, you vote with your dollars. The only democracy I support. Um, so uh, yeah, so you can also you can also comment uh, or or uh, support me through the uh, Amazon affiliate links on the on the website. Just uh, make your purchases through there, and I uh, get a commission, no extra cost to you. So uh, that'll help me out as well. So um, yeah, awesome conversation, Adam. Really uh, Thanks so ex- much. excited to find out all, everything that you're up to. Um, and uh, we will talk soon. So uh, so this is Peaceful Anarchism on the Voluntary Virtues Network and theseedsofliberty.com and theconsciousresistance.com. Wishing everyone have a wonderful day. Take care. Thanks so much. Bye. Bye. Cell 411 is a free app for Android and iOS that replaces government-controlled 911. Cell 411 allows you to preset a group of friends or private organizations to show up in any emergency. Cell 411 is a nightmare for the state because it proves their so-called services aren't needed. Cell 411 has had thousands of installs, and of course it's covered by the Bipcot No Government License. Cell 411 because your friends won't shoot you when you're in trouble. Without the government, who would build the emergency services? You and Cell 411. Get it today at GetCell411.com. That's GetCell411.com.